Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Travel Free. In today's video, I am going to explain about the Manet mobile ad hoc network in short, I mean mobile ad hoc networks in short called as Manet in the subject of mobile computing. So let's quickly get into the video without any further delay. Man, Manet, M-A-N-E-T, mobile ad hoc network, right? So Manet is an autonomous collection of mobile users autonomous means independent right independent mobile users are connected together or grouped together who communicate over wireless links they communicate with each other and that too with wireless no no uh, i mean wired connections between the two or more you know mobile users they connect with wireless communication only right so manet is a autonomous independent collection of mobile users it's not like it has a particular architecture it has a particular infrastructure everybody has to follow that it's not like that everybody can do uh, the communication process in their own way right and here in manet the node will act as both host as well as the router also so in this video, we will be learning about the characteristics of Manet, we will be learning about the applications, we will be learning about the properties and also the challenges of Manet. So characteristics, properties, challenges and applications of Manet we will be learning in this video, right? So without any delay, let's start learning about the characteristics of Manet. Number one is dynamic topology. See, as I said, it is a collection of autonomous uh, users, right? So it's not like it has a fixed topology it has dynamic topology because everybody has their own independence to create their own uh, topology right so the topology is not fixed it has dynamic topology and it has a limited security why see whenever we are uh, doing anything any protocol or anything say like tcp or udp or any protocol the standard is fixed right the architecture is fixed the mechanism which happens in the protocol is fixed so based on that, we can uh, design the security. That means, uh, you know, uh, here the risk may happen in this place. So we will design a, uh, like a security model we will be thinking. But here it's not like that, right? It doesn't have a particular topology. So that is the reason why designing a particular security model for this manner is not very easy. So the security is limited. You don't have much security here. And the next is autonomous. That is what I already said. Independent, your own and distributed it is not confined to one particular place right it is distributed all over the network it is distributed throughout the world so it is not confined to one particular place it's distributed and the next we have the properties of manet so coming to the properties of manet number one is fast network establishment that means network can be established between two uh, mobile devices faster and peer-to-peer -peer connectivity we have that means we don't have the concept of server here here we don't have any server peer-to-peer -peer, that means one mobile will be directly connected to the other mobile one peer will be directly con connected to the other peer here we don't have the concept of server right and less wireless connectivity range we have and no need of centralized system why we don't need a centralized system because here it's individual wish right it, uh, it is autonomous it is independent so the, there is no requirement of centralized system here we don't even have a server so we don't require a centralized system here and independent commutation is what you already know uh, autonomous or independent freedom everything means the same right and the next we will be seeing about the challenges of manet so what are the challenges of manet that means in which uh, situations in uh, which fields manet has to be improved and all First thing is topology. Why topology? Because topology of the manet is not fixed. See, if the topology is not fixed, you cannot design a, a proper security also for that, right? So the co uh, the nodes keep on moving, right? It is like if you have several nodes also, but still it is the wish of the user to arrange those nodes according to his wish, right? So the nodes keep on moving. So that is the reason why you don't have a fixed topology. Right and the security. Security is also limited because you don't have particular security model for that. And even bandwidth. Bandwidth also is also limited. You cannot transmit uh, messages for a long uh, distance. Right. The bandwidth is mini, I mean, limited. And next, the energy. Why energy is a challenge? Because we don't have energy backup. So if the power, if the battery is drained, then you don't have an energy backup for that. Right. So uh, whatever is the mobile, whatever is the 
power of your mobile node manet will also be using the same power right if your mobile power goes down manet power also will go down right so that is what happens in the case of manet so as the network energy power will be equal to mobile node energy power and mobile node energy will be very less right so energy is also one of the problem and routing routing is also very difficult because routing means what finding a path right finding a path between uh, nodes connecting nodes from source to destination we call it as routing but here the nodes keep on moving we have moving nodes here mobile nodes we have here so it is not possible to establish a link between the source and destination and establish a proper you know a way or a proper path between the source and destination right it is a bit hard it's not a very easy so these are the challenges of manet topology security bandwidth energy and routing are the challenges that we face in the case of manet right and coming to the applications of manet see you know about manet right it doesn't have a fixed infrastructure it doesn't have a fixed architecture so this manet can be used in anywhere and any time situations that means you can use it anywhere you can use it at any time because it doesn't have any restrictions right you can use it only up to this range or you can use it only in this location it's not like that it doesn't have any fixed architecture or it doesn't have any fixed infrastructure it doesn't have any fixed standards so you can use it anywhere and any time right and what are the applications let's see the examples first one it is used in synchronizing the contents of one device with the other device so it is used for data synchronization we can say simply and next one it is used for distributing the contents over a network see you'll have different nodes connected right so all those nodes will be uh, i mean the data will be transmitted the data will be distributed the contents will be distributed among all the nodes over the network so you can simply say it any it supports data distribution it supports data synchronization it supports data distribution and it is used for both multicasting and broadcasting you know what multicasting is right multicasting is you'll have only one source and you'll have many destinations so it is used in multicasting and broadcasting it is used in mesh topology you might have learned about the mesh topology in computer networks we have different topologies right star ring bus so mesh topology it supports and it is also used for image acquisition and also image processing and also distributing that particular image in the network right so it is used for image acquisition processing and also distributing the image in the network and the sixth one is it is used in provision of seamless interaction seamless interaction and ubiquitous mobile computing ubiquitous also means the same thing right uh, allowing facilitating computing everywhere and anywhere everywhere anytime anywhere something like that that uh, ubiquitous also means the same so it supports for seamless interaction that means um, you will not have any disturbances in between right and ubiquitous mobile computing also it will support right simply you can say it supports data synchronization it supports data distribution multicasting broadcasting mesh topology image processing and distributing the image in the network it also supports for ubiquitous mobile computing simply you can say in this way also if you are confused with the terms i have written right so that's all for this video guys in the next coming video uh, we'll be learning about uh, different routing algorithms right we have so many routing algorithms in mobile computing right so let's learn about each and every routing algorithm and also let's learn about the data synchronization data dissemination and all in all the topics you'll be learning in the next coming videos okay still then stay tuned to my channel subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed and also share it with your friends so that it will be useful for your friends as well if they are like if they want to if they are preparing for their exams or if they want to learn the concepts of mobile computing apart from mobile computing i've made uh, videos on different other topics as well you can have a look at my channel for uh, other subjects related to computer science and uh, Apart from computer science, the only players that I made is managerial economics and financial analysis that is common to all the students actually and also some placement related videos also I have done. So have a look at my channel and also uh, subscribe and share it with your friends. Let me know in the comment section what you guys feel about the video, whether you guys understood it or not or if, there are, if I have to make any modifications and, and all. Let me know in the comment section and that's all for this video. Let's meet up soon in the next video with another new topic.